All right, so here's the OCW worksheet I worked on. I'm not going to cover it in a lot of great detail because it's more or less self-explanatory. So up here you have you can put information about your rifle, you know, barrel length, twist rate, whatever, your scope, um, make, model, what reticle, you know, elevation, wind adjusted. So it's mil dot reticle with mil or MOA adjustments. Um, rings and base. You can put the actual rings and base, or you can just put, you know, whatever the total cant value is between your base and your rings. In my case, on my on my 308, it's a 20 MOA cant, and on my 338, it's a spur amount. It's like 20.5 MOA. You would put that information here. This is the big one. Like these two here are probably. I'd say almost optional, but I mean, this is mandatory. Right? Like the whole point of this spreadsheet is this right here. So you want to put your bullet primer powder, your case, if it's coated, like say if you have Molly coating on there, HPN or whatever, you fill that in. Environmentals, you just fill this out when you go to the range to fire your, your OCW test. Date, temp, humidity, barometric pressure, your elevation, whatever. If you use like absolute pressure, you can just you know, changes to say absolute or whatever. Your max load in grains. So this is what we'll use from step two earlier. We'll just fill out our max load in grains. In this case, it's 92. So this would be for my 338. Correction value. <coughs> so in the OCW test, once you get past charge four, you're adding between 0.7 and 1% until you get one step over your max load. In my case, I'm, I'm firing what I would consider like an, a, a magnum or, or even an ultra magnum. So the steps between charges are greater, right? Because you have more powder, so that each increase as a percentage gets greater. So I adjust this correction value down until charge 12 is my, um, my, is my load that's just over max. So that gives me, you know, nine different charges to test other than the ciders. Now, for say 308 at 46 grains, you might set this value to, you know, 1.007, we'll say. And then we notice charge 10 is our first charge that's over max value. Because your distance between your individual charges is is smaller, it's not necessary to fire as many test groups. But if you want to fire all the test groups, you can set it to five. You know, it'll be twelve, give or take. Or you can even go crazy and you know, set it to ten, and then you you'd only have one, two, three, you know, five. But of course, if you're shooting a something small, like I don't know, twenty-two, two fifty, where it's twenty-something grains of powder. Right, you're, you're, it's only 0.2 grains between charges. Whereas if you're shooting a big 338, you know, that's that's nearly a full grain between charges. So you you'd want to have um, more increments, I guess you'd say. So that's what this correction value is. These formulas are already built in correct, so it'll it'll calculate what your ciders need to be, what your charge four needs to be, and it'll highlight all the charges that are over your max will be in red. So your goal is to fire only one charge over the max and you shouldn't have any problems there. So down here I put some links for some more notes or for more resources, I'm sorry. So you got the OCW targets, you got the forum, Dan Newberry's forum, you have his website, which coincidentally as it happens today, which is Sunday, February 28th, 2016, it's down. So hopefully he gets that back up. If you don't, in the README tab, I actually just copied verbatim the the uh, instructions from his website and linked it here. So this will be on my Google Docs, and I'll leave it there permanently. So if Google's down, then, I don't know, OCW is probably uh, the least of your worries. Anyways, I put some notes here, and you can you can fill this out on the range. You know, you can put, like, the azimuth reading if you're keeping track of that for spin, you know, to check... Um, to keep track of Coriolis effect and spin drift. You can put notes in here like it's a cloudy day. 
or it was a sunny day, or, you know, Mirage was bad, or whatever note you want to put, or, you know, if there was a prevailing wing, uh, um, wind speed, you can put that. So, that's the worksheet in a nutshell. Pretty simple, pretty easy to fill out. Um, this should, depending on your printer settings, print out on one full page in landscape. And the idea is you would just print this on like some cardstock or something, take it to the range, use it, fill it all out, and then take your targets down, staple them together, and then file that so you have it forever. Then it stays with that rifle in case A, you sell it, or, I don't know, B, you want to do more load development, or you think the throat's eroded some, or, or whatever. It's just for, you can keep it for record keeping, or throw it away. I'm real big on record keeping in general, um, especially for precision rifle. You can't keep too much data, so I, I keep them, but you can do whatever you want with it. You don't even have to use this. I mean, you can just follow the instructions and write it down on a piece of paper and go out there with some paper plates with a, with a uh, black Sharpie marker. I just like... I just like having this, keeping it straight, so when I'm on the reloading bench, I'm not trying to remember what charges I'm doing. I just have this sitting on the bench, and I know. And I can even, like, you know, take a pen and tick mark each charge as I filled my three cases. So, in a nutshell, what you're going to do here is you're going to fill out, uh, load one round for the first three charges and use these as ciders on your target. If you've not sighted in the rifle before, obviously you'd load more. And then you're going to fill or you're going to charge three rounds for each charge weight you see here up until whatever charge weight you've told you've decided to stop at and then in ascending order you're going to fire one shot on its dedicated target at a time so you from charge four you're going to sh shoot one shot on target one and then you're going to shoot one shot from charge five on target two and charge six on target three so on and so forth you do that one at a time for all your charges stopping however often you need to to let the barrel cool you're gonna fire one string all the way across so charge four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then usually if you're doing full twelve shots i would just you know run a chamber mop down the chamber you don't need to fully clean it let it cool and then you're gonna do that again four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then again so you're not firing all three of your shots from charge four at once you're firing four five six seven eight with however much time you need to rest or get yourself collected. Um, it's really important that if you have a flyer, you call it. And I even actually load four for each weight. Because it never, you know, we're talking about firing upwards of 40 shots in a sitting. You're going to have flyers. I don't care who you are. So take your time. Get it done. If you have a flyer, you know, use that fourth round if you just if you decide to load four. You call the flyer, then you fire that four shot to try and get a good idea of what that load looks like. So next, we're gonna go out. We're gonna load up the ammo. We're gonna go out to the range. I'm gonna shoot the ladder on the target, and I'll pull the targets down, and then we'll talk about how to read your targets.